Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on, YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I want to talk about some fantasy collaborations. I think all of us have thought about this, you know, for, you know, at some point. It's it's all around us all the time, you know. Uh, makers that you'd never think would collaborate with, you know, this, this company or that company do, and they and it brings an interesting uh, knife to the table. Oftentimes, it is a really expensive custom design um, that was just, you know, out of the ballpark for a lot of people, and then, uh, you know, they they work with somebody like ZT or ProTech. You know, or sometimes it's a overseas manufacturer to uh, get a, a less expensive version of it into the hands of people who either don't want to or can't spend that much. And that's interesting. Oftentimes, uh, two different makers will collaborate to just make something insane. Uh, and that's also interesting, right? For one reason or another, it happens all around us all the time. And I've got some ideas in my head, as I'm sure you guys do too, of collaborations that would be very interesting. Um, some of these collaborations might be impossible for one reason or another. That's okay. It's just it's just an idea, right? Um, I'm going to share some pretty generic ones with you guys. I've got five of them, but the idea here is actually to hear from you guys. I would like to, if this ends up being interesting and popular, I would actually like to turn this into a series where, you know, if you guys have an interesting idea, I'd like to put it into one of these screen recorded episodes and then create, you know, some discussion around it. And then, you know, I mean, the, ultimately, the coolest thing that could possibly happen is that these two entities actually end up collaborating to make one of these. Now, that's a pretty far stretch. For the most part, this is just going to be entertainment and, you know, uh, uh, discussion starter. So, yeah, tell me about your fantasy collaborations down in the comment section. It's comment section. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. That's perfectly okay. Um, just let me know. So, I'm going to start off here with my first one. I don't know how much sense this makes, but... Um, I love Medford knives. Absolutely love them. The, the biggest draw, of course, being the massively overbuilt, you know, aggressive nature. It's just insane. The, the designs don't always make perfect sense to me, but man, are they interesting, right? This USMC Raider is a beast of a knife. Beast. This picture is not doing it justice. If I remember correctly, they said that blade stock was a third of an inch thick. This thing is a sledgehammer of a knife, right? Now, what happens, <laughs> imagine with me, if we combine Medford's ridiculous, overbuilt, aggressive nature with something that is kind of all, it's also insane, but in a different way. Um, <laughs> this isn't going to make any sense. Imagine if we combine that with a single action OTF, uh, in particular, something like the Halo 6 from Microtech. I have never seen a monstrously overbuilt OTF, except... For those of you who want to call me crazy, except the giant oversized 20 something thousand dollar uh, uh, OTF, the Halo, didn't they do it like a massive Halo 5 one time? Made no sense. It was literally like the size of a, um, um, I, I don't know, it was like a, a, like a bicycle. <laughs> it was this big monstrous thing, but it functioned, right? So, yeah, there, there's complications with making something like like with a massively thick blade stock, like something on a Medford uh, Praetorian or the USMC Raider, and combining it with, you know, the chassis of an OTF and the mechanism, the spring, right? It also might be kind of dangerous, but it would be super interesting, right? Microtech obviously can produce monstrously oversized functional OTFs, as they have proven, I would very much like to see a Medford OTF. <laughs> I'm thinking it would probably have to be single action, a double action, uh, something that's designed to throw a massively thick blade and then retract it without destroying itself. I I don't know anything about that, but I, I'm going to guess that it would have to be under tension and, and it would need to be a single action. But, oh my gosh, how cool would that be? Um, yeah, so there you go. There's the idea. Um, moving on here, let's talk about Medford knives again, and let's talk about zero tolerance knives. Zero tolerance is trying to get back into it, right? They have collaborated with Rick Hinder in the past. They have collaborated with Mick Strider, with Les George, right? Recently, Medford knives came out with this Praetorian Swift, which truthfully is the, um, the one form that the Praetorian takes that is makes a, a lot of sense to a lot more people. This is an automatic knife and it's really cool in and of itself. This is a really, really cool design and it's actually an EDC sized knife. 
Um, it does come with a Medford price tag, though, at about $525. Understandably, considering what Medford puts into his knives. And I love this version of it. But boy, would I like to see Medford collaborate with ZT. And um, seeing something of a Praetorian turned into a Zero Tolerance-esque titanium frame lock flipper kind of does sound generic, but it also sounds really, really interesting. If they did it with the, the Hinder Eclipse in the 0393 and 0392, why couldn't they do it with the version of the Praetorian that makes the most sense, which is the, the profile of the Swift, and turn it into a ZT flipper? I would buy that. I would buy that immediately. And I feel like whether or not people agreed with, you know, whether or not it made sense, it certainly would put some spotlight back on ZT. And I would imagine people would buy it. I don't know. This is just me speculating. And more so, it's just me dreaming and wanting this thing to happen, even if it doesn't make any sense. You know, a lot of this depends on the, you know, how uh, the maker views uh, the company or um, you know, whether or not the company is able to take on a project like that, right? I don't know what position Zero Tolerance is in. I'm sure Med uh, Greg Medford has a lot on his plate and maybe he has no, you know, there's, there's nothing, you know, maybe he wouldn't want to work with ZT, but it would be super cool. It would be really cool. And I, <laughs> I just, I want ZT to, I want to see them succeed because they were such a big part of the earlier part of my, you know, getting into knives for me. Um, and it would just be really neat. Moving on here, still talking about ZT, but this time let's switch up the design. Um, this is a TAD or Triple Op Design Dauntless. Uh, for those of you who don't know, why? I mean, for those of you who have never heard of this knife or don't know what it is, why haven't you heard of it? Because they barely ever make them. The Dauntless is a, a famous knife, number one, because it's super rare. Number two, it's got a super simple, super functional design, right? Uh, the I, I believe it's a mid tech, and then they have collaborated with um, Rick Hinderer. They've collaborated with Todd Rexford, with Mick Strider to make Dauntless. Right? It's like you, you add the Hinderer element to the Dauntless, or the Strider element to the Dauntless. Great, but those versions are even more rare than the regular Dauntless. And they, Triple Lot Design doesn't make enough of these, right, to, where people can get their hands on them. I would like to see a Phosphor bronze uh, or bearings, either way, whatever, whatever ZT would want to do. But a, a, a titanium frame lock, thumb stud opener. I think bearings would actually be a little bit more interesting. Dauntless. Call it the 0, 0497, whatever ZT, whatever number they want to put on it. I don't care about that. But I want to see a titanium frame lock version of this knife that's made, you know, in zero tolerance production form. That is, number one, substantially more obtainable. And number two, substantially less expensive, Right. And again, something interesting that Zero Tolerance could put out there. It's not like either of these companies have never collaborated with Bizarre, you know, like the combinations of collaborations, uh, you know, between either of these companies has always been really crazy and in some cases unexpected. This would be super cool. I wish more people knew about the Dauntless and this would be a, a, a way, but the Dauntless design, the nice thing about it is it is very aesthetically plain and therefore in my opinion, appealing to a wider variety of people. Oftentimes what happens with a zero tolerance design is it's just like the GTC, the airborne collaboration. I never thought in a million years that would happen with zero tolerance. And it's neat that they put that in production form, but it was like real, like you really had to love that knife, right? It, that thing was weird. Um, the Dauntless, anybody who wants to put, you know, if you want to look up a picture of it, it's very straightforward, very functional, and would make an excellent titanium frame lock uh, flipper or thumb stud opener uh, on bearings or phosphor bronze, and I'm sure would appeal to a wide range of people. But again, this type of collaboration may not be able to take place for one of many reasons. I have no idea. It would just be really, really interesting. Moving on here, Koenig. Bill Koenig. The Koenig Arius is an awesome knife. It is also a ridiculously expensive knife. And here lately, as much as I thought they were becoming more available, I'm, I'm hearing that actually, no, you, you, even if you do have the money to spend on this thing, right? 700, what do they cost? Uh, between 550 and $800, depending on your build, right? Mega high end American production. Oh my goodness. Really difficult to get a hold of. I mean, yeah, again, it'd be neat to see a ZT version of this, um, but. Truthfully, I would like to see a side opening automatic version of this knife. I would like to see um, uh, uh, Bill Koenig collaborate with ProTech to bring an auto Arius to the table. <laughs> I just think that would be sick. Now, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, like, 
Well, then what would be the point of the opening hole? Because that's a huge characteristic of the knife. Well, Strider collaborated with ProTech, and they took the opening hole out of the Strider blade, and it's still one of the most popular automatic knives I think that ProTech does. Maybe not. I don't know, but I really like it. I think it's cool. I know a lot of people like it. Um, I, I think they could totally do that here and keep the overall profile of the Arius, right? Uh, remove the uh, remove the flipper tab completely and even add a forward choil to it like uh, the one that Dr. Frunky has, right? And then, you know, maybe you could just keep the milling, maybe you could mill the pattern of the hole into the blade to keep that characteristic, but then make it a switch blade, a side opening switch blade. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe that doesn't sound cool at all, but imagine they keep the contouring on the aluminum. This would be an expensive auto, definitely. But boy, would it be super cool. Speaking of knives that I think should have automatic forms and the company ProTech uh, and uh, knives that are ridiculously expensive and impossible to get a hold of, but still appeal aesthetically to a wide variety of different people, the Holt Spectre. Uh, probably more than anything right now, I would like to see, um, and again, this may or may not be possible for a million different reasons, I would love to see ProTech collaborate with Holt, Holt Blade Works, to make an auto specter. Um, again, you could just completely delete the flipper tab and just put a button on here. I mean, um, the reason that I'd like to see this is because I loved that ProTech collaborated with um, uh, Prometheus Design Works to bring the auto Invictus to the table. That is a beautifully simple design. The original Invictus was a titanium frame lock, right? And then ProTech collaborated with them and made an automatic version of it, and it was beautiful. Um, now, I don't know, and in this case, I honestly would not prefer a forward twirl because I'd love to make use of the uh, the overall design and silhouette, the flat grind, right? Um, adding, um, you know, milled out aluminum to this thing or just aluminum in general should keep it around the same weight compared to the, uh, the milled out titanium frame. And then you have this very thin, fully flat ground blade, right? So, but it's still over eight inches. So it'd still be a full size knife, but um, it would be a super, you know, fairly compact and very lightweight design that would be a cutting champion in an automatic form. I would love an automatic Holt, the Auto Spectre. I would, oh, it's crispy. Maybe I'm alone here. Maybe that's just me. That's just Metal Complex fantasizing about a stupid, you know, an impossible combination, but God, I would love to see that. I hope you guys kind of get the idea here because I feel like there are a million unsung ideas amidst the knife community that are just just rattling, rattling around in people's heads. They're, they are Some of them are probably amazing thoughts on collaborative efforts between maker and company or maker and maker, right? And they've just never been thought of. So yeah, tell me the things, tell me the uh, combinations that you guys think would be interesting and then I'll make another top five or I, what I would actually rather do is make a top 10 episode and talk about those and hopefully continue to generate ideas and draw attention to this because if I you know if I bring 100 different ideas to light from my comments section and just one of them turns into an actual effort that would be a dream come true and beneficial for a lot for uh, obviously for the knife community, anybody interested in the collaboration, and then for the companies involved, and uh, my channel, for sure, absolutely. So let me know what you think. I'd like to see, if, uh, uh, and, and again, if you guys would like to see more of this uh, series, if I turned it into a series, um, we can call it the Fantasy Collab Series or whatever you want, but um, that's going to be pretty much it for today. I hope that this was, in, at the very least, entertaining. If it was, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.